after the lamp. So, my name is Gregory Sims, I'm head of modern languages from Wackiemoss High School in Rochdale. And um, our school has always had a, a, a real relentless focus on learning. And over the last sort of five or six years, quite a lot of our staff have had the opportunity to visit various countries around the world. Probably a third of the teaching staff have been on visits. And this is a few slides from our latest visit, which is the Scandinavia at half term. We went to Helsinki, Finland, and Copenhagen in Denmark. And I just want to show you a few things, that, share a few things that we saw, and then we learned more we were there. So this looks like a pretty kind of ordinary classroom, I guess. Um, it was a pretty ordinary classroom, but I guess the interesting thing about this school is how they organised the learning. And we call it our school team on deck, it's something that we're quite interested in at the moment. And they've taken three classes and they put them together so they have about 75 learners and they put them with five staff for 90% of the time. And they work more or less on project work that whole time. And the whole huge advantage of this is that obviously the teachers get to know the learners very, very well and the learners obviously get to know the teachers very well and they get to know parents very well as well the teacher um, And so the learning relationships are really, really active. We saw quite a lot of project-based learning, which is another thing that our school is particularly interesting in. This young lady, um, Rebecca, is 13 years old, she spoke in beautiful English. She brought a little bit of a tear to my eye at the and she had decided on her week-long project to talk about and to look, about, look into the Korean War. She, put, she described this all a bit as a bit of a history group, in beautiful English, like I say, and had decided to display her learning in that way. She could talk about what she'd learned, but she could also talk about the process of the learning as well in quite a lot of detail. So she's very impressive. One of the biggest differences we noticed with the learning spaces, this is quite a famous school in Copenhagen called Peru, and um, there are 800 students with no classrooms at all. And lots of really, really interesting spaces around the school where um, students can learn depending on how or what they're actually working on. And then in this particular school, they had a focus on the uh, natural world and lots of the outside spaces we use uh, quite effectively as well. This looks like a food tech room. Wrong, it's a kitchen that the kids can use whenever they want. They want to get a drink, they want to get some a snack, they can leave a lesson, they've got any permission most of the time, they go out and get some to the From a very, very early age, there's a huge amount of trust between the teachers and the learners, right from being with the ones at school to the under 16. We'll come back to the trust thing in a second. This school was a sixth form of a thousand students and the architect had been given one brief, building a school of the future. And the architect had thought, basically, how can we do things differently? How can learners learn differently? How can teachers teach differently? You can imagine in this school, it's completely impossible for a teacher to stand at the front like I am now and just talk to learners. Really, really difficult. So it becomes you know, lots of technology in this particular school. But the thing probably that struck us most was the, the amazing relationship between learners and, and the staff. Um, first name terms, no uniforms, um, and it was quite amazing to see them. It just, just had a little longer to get there. Um, one of the things that also struck me was the um, I've got this up. Um, what's my um, that's it. Um, one of the things that really struck me was asking the learners at each of the schools what they thought about um, going to school and unanimously they loved going to school. I didn't have any consent at all that. And again, going back to this issue of trust. This school has a canal deliberately built right through the centre of it. This is the one that focuses on the natural world again. And I love this picture because the learners sit on a little bit of deck in there. And what they up to is a great time in the lunchtime, but they just decided to go and do their own on that bit of deck in there. Um, I guess all they're able to do is get the health and safety in there. But those issues just didn't seem to exist. And lots of learner learning autonomy. The group of 10 year olds here leading an assembly and um, they were doing a live science experiment to their peers, um, which was really, really sort of hard one to see. And lots of these kind of relaxed spaces around the school where learners could sit and check out, or get on the other way of learning as well. You can imagine the look on the uh, British teachers' faces when the actors came out. It was a bit of an intake of breath, just like that. Yeah. Um, and then we had a lot of 
And this is a very, very interesting day-long project that we saw. And then the point for the students was that they had to carve some cutlery so by the end of the day, they could use the cutlery to eat something. And behind them, you can't really see it very well, is a fire pit that was lit. They were cooking the meat and by the end of the day, they were using these man to eat the food. And this is their teacher. Probably my, probably my favorite picture of <laughs> And it's probably doing him a disservice to say that that's what he was doing most of the time. He was working very hard at the beginning to set, up, set the project up. And this was him watching them do the hard work, which is surely what we're going about. These are some of the reflections <coughs> that we turn home that, that we really sort of um, want to sort of go more about, particularly this idea of learning and food and death. Um, just again, thinking about what, what we saw. We saw teachers who were happy, who felt really supported by the government in both countries. They were encouraged to share with the schools, encouraged to experiment with new techniques, and to support each other. No offset or equivalent in either country, and yet Finland comes out as one of the top countries in the world every year. So I really do recommend you can find that you can get in front in some of them. Thank you very much. Seriously, talk straight about that.